Welcome back everyone, my name is Echo and I hope you're having a great day. Today's Minecraft video, we have a brand new beta for Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. This is beta version 1.17.0.50, now available for Android, Windows 10 and Xbox. So today is a very good day for the Minecraft community because as you can see via this version, 1.16 is now complete. We have been in the version 1.16 for pretty much one year now. So expect the version 1.16.230 to release over the next one to two weeks. This week also introduces some amazing features like amethysts, amethyst geodes, naturally generating lush biomes, and so much more. If you just want the official change log, it is down below in the description and at the top of the YouTube comment section. So here is the official confirmation. Jay Wells, Mega Spud, community manager. Give him a follow. He's a nice guy. It was a tough call, but take a closer look at some of the sparkly features in this week's Minecraft hashtag caves and cliffs beta. Some features are starting to come out from behind the experimental toggle too. Read all about it. So quick reminder, if you do want to check out these new features, when you go to your world, make sure you have the experimental toggles enabled. I literally just enable all of them. Then you're pretty good to go. So let's check out this week's beta. It took me literally two hours to set up today's beta. So if you could do me an absolute solid and leave a like, I do really appreciate it. There is so many features to go through today and I wanted to make sure you fully understood all of them. Experimental features. Amethyst geodes have been added to the game. These huge geodes can be found anywhere underground in the overworld. Amethyst geodes have an outer layer of a new block called smooth basalt. Amethyst geodes have a second layer of another new block called calcite. Before we get into this, guys, I want to show you what the geodes looks like. Now, unfortunately, the bedrock version does not have spectator mode, so you do need specific seeds, and I have just the one for you. Honestly, it's one of the coolest seeds I've seen, so I think his name was Rappel. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. It's like the new mine shafts. Uh, this, this is what I want to show you. So these now naturally generate in Minecraft, consisting of the amethyst block, the calcite block, smooth basalt. You've got, I said, the budding version, uh, and also amethyst clusters and shards. But we will get more into that in today's video. There's one right there, and there's also one right there. If you want the seed, it's literally right at the top. And just come to these specific coordinates. You'll have no problem at all. Just make sure you have the toggles on. Next up, calcite, tough, and smooth basalt have been added to the game. So this is what these blocks look like. And this is smooth basalt. And how you obtain this is regular basalt can be smelted now. And you'll get the smooth basalt. So yeah, that's the first thing introduced in this week's beta. Let me explain them to you a little bit more. Amethyst cluster has been added to the game. Amethyst clusters grow from budding amethyst, which can be found inside geodes. Now you'll find this and this, and these will naturally start to grow on these, but I'll explain that a little bit more down there. It says clusters have four growth stages, small amethyst bud, medium amethyst bud, large amethyst bud, an amethyst cluster. Clusters can only grow when they are placed on a budding amethyst. So just to explain what happened here, I literally placed these on here and they've grown. So let me just uh, explain this in a little bit more detail. They're literally growing because of how long it has taken me to set up today's beta. So if we go to and just type in amethyst, you'll notice we have small, medium, large, and then the full one. And that's what they look like on this. So as long as you do have this block, which is the budding amethyst, these will grow. 
It then says, fully grown amethyst clusters drop four amethyst shards or more with fortune when an iron pickaxe or higher is used. And otherwise, drop is nothing when broken. So if we grab iron and, and also fortune for both of them, you can... Gotta go to game mode survival here. Uh, you can fortune these. So it said by default the outcome is four. That was with iron, it gave us seven. And we use a diamond one here. The outcome here, let's quickly throw these on the floor. The outcome was seven again. If you try and break this with your hand, as you guys know, the outcome is literally going to be nothing at all. As you guys can see there. But if we go back to game mode creative and I grab myself a, just a regular diamond pick here. And we go back to this one and we place this here. Back to game mode survival. If you just break it, you're only going to get four. So that's why we have 18. So yeah, fortune does work with this. So fortune just gets better and better in the next update. Clusters can be silk touched at any stage. So we have silk of the touch. Back to game mode survival. We can silk touch the small version. Medium versions. Uh, they're, they're both medium because of the growth stages. Uh, but yeah, you can literally just like silk touch all of these and take them with you if you wanted to use them for decoration purposes. Budding Amethyst has been added to the game. You already know that by now. On any side of a budding amethyst block where there is air or a water source block, a small amethyst bud will eventually grow because these geodes do generate in water sometimes. So you can see here, this can literally grow on all sides, which is... Absolutely perfect, because eventually you can end up with tons of big ones, which means more shards. And they have quite a few uses. Amethyst buds can only grow when attached to a budding amethyst and will grow until they become amethysts. So for example, uh, it will only grow on the budding version. There is two versions which I showed you, just the regular one. If we type it in here, amethyst block and the budding amethyst. Continuing on. Cluster amethyst blocks have been added to the game. Amethyst comes in block form inside geodes in two ways, which I just explained it. The block of amethyst or the budding amethyst. All types of amethyst blocks, clusters included, create beautiful sounds when you walk on them. Break them, place them, or hit them with a projectile. Go and make some music. So we'll start off by just walking on these. Now with a projectile. Even snow. And even a trident. Although noises are a lot louder when you stand on them. Tinted glass has been added to the game. Tinted glass is a type of glass that does not allow light to pass through. Tinted glass is crafted by putting a glass block in the middle of four amethyst shards. Tinted glass can be obtained without silk touch. It does not shatter like ordinary glass. This is tinted glass. As mentioned, it does not let in light. So it's quite dark. I'm not sure if anyone's gonna come up with some really cool farms with this, but I'm super excited about it. If we go to forward slash game mode survival, if you break this, it doesn't shatter. I really hope this is going to be diable in the future because it is such a good introduction. In terms of crafting it, you need regular glass and amethyst shards. The glass goes in the middle and these literally just go around the outside. Now you get two per crafting, so 32. Quite expensive in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, spyglass. The spyglass item has been added to the game and can be crafted with copper ingots and amethyst shards. Camera movement when looking through a spyglass is slowed to make it more comfortable to use. This is adjustable using spyglass damping slider in settings. So in terms of crafting it, it is crafted with two of these and one of these. I personally think the recipe should be like this, but it's not. Now this thing is basically Optifine for the Bedrock version. However, if we hit F1 on the Bedrock version, 
We still have the black outline. Now, in terms of movement speed, well, you can speed it up or slow it down. Now, you do that by going into your settings. Depending on whether you're using a controller or a keyboard, you change it. So, for example, if we increase it, your, your camera movement speed is going to be a lot slower. Like, hey, look, there's a wolf down there kind of thing. Uh, but having it a lot higher, I think, is a lot better. But if you want to be cracked out of your mind and have it all the way down, just let me know, let you know that this is, like, insane watch. <laughs> Is so hard to see and I'm hardly moving my mouse at all. So you're gonna have to tweak it and change it to your preference um, I found my happy place around about 80 it, it just seemed perfect, but it's completely up to you Raw ore blocks added block of raw iron raw copper and raw gold Just like other ore materials you can craft a compact version with raw ore items in order to save inventory space. Ladies and gentlemen of the Bedrock community, welcome raw iron, raw gold, and raw copper. I also want to mention that these um, uh, items, textures, are still a work in progress. So before full release, they might also change again. Now, basically, guys, these are now obtained via ores. So, just like diamonds, when you mine it, you now instantly get a drop. And the cool thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is if you have fortune, it can also be increased. So, if I break just a regular iron ore block now, you will only get one every single time. Now, this is, again, to save space. So, you can compact your space a little bit more. This is the exact same block, but obviously the deep slate version. If we break this with fortune, you have the chance to get more. This time around, it didn't work. Let's try it with uh, gold and gold. We only got two this time. Hmm. Unless I'm just really unlucky in today's recording. Let's let's try that again. Okay, let's try and fortune iron again and see if we can get some more pieces from this. If we don't, my guess is... Hmm, we'll try again. So we've got eight there. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Fortune, that gave us one. That gave us two. That gave us three, that gave us four, and that gave us five. Okay, so I imagine the Bedrock version hasn't had this implemented yet. But what I do want to show you guys is we do have the bean block. Feast your eyes on the bean block. So in terms of crafting it, exactly the same as previously, you get yourself the block variation as well. And the gold one is literally a meme at the moment because it looks like beans. So yeah, we officially have the bean block. If you're still watching, I appreciate you. Blobs of tough now generate in the world at Y levels below 16. Tweaks and fixes. Bucketing and Axolotl no longer unlocks the I am a marine biologist achievement. Axolotls are now much more likely to spawn. Axolotls no longer grant themselves regen when killing their target. Player now receives experience points after breeding Axolotls caves. Cobwebs no longer generate suspended in the air in mine shafts. Copper. Copper surface now deoxidizes in a more random pattern when struck by lightning. Copper blocks. Horizontally placed lightning rods now interact properly with respect to deoxidizing copper blocks. Copper blocks struck by lightning now deoxidize even if there's no lightning rod present. Copper stairs. Now produce their unique footstep sounds at positioning below Y equals zero. Deep slate. Cobbled deep slate, deep slate bricks, and deep slate tiles now give experience from smelting in a furnace. Cobbled deep slate can now be used as a crafting material for tools, furnaces, and brewing stands. Dripstone. Landing on dripstone no longer deals full damage when the game rule full damage is set to false. Dripstone block is now correctly named. Only the tips of stalagmites deal increased fall damage. Cauldrons fill slightly faster with water from dripping. Lightning rod. Lightning rod is now rendered correctly when held in hand. Throwing a channeling trident at a rod during a thunderstorm now correctly converts nearby mobs. Blocks connected to a lightning rod now correctly conduct redstone signal when the rod is hit by lightning. 
throwing a channeling trident at a rod during a thunderstorm now correctly affects villagers. Lush caves. Lush cave biomes now randomly generate underground. That is the second introduction. We had the introduction of the geodes. Now these are also naturally generating as well. I tried to find one in today's seed, um, but I couldn't. So go and have a look because the lush caves are pretty cool. It says azalea and flowering azalea leaves now have a chance to drop azalea or flowering azalea when broken. So that is to do with this. So when you break these, they have a chance to drop exactly like that. As you guys can see, we had the flowering azalea. Thank you. Perfect example in today's video. Moss carpet now has block placing sound. So that's a new introduction. Nothing major, just a simple sound added. Azalea and flowering azalea now have ambient occlusion. And this one says bone mealing small drip leaves now create big drip leaves of a random height between one and five. So let me show you. So this could literally be one or it could be five. And this changes. Again, there's one there. Let's try it again. There's another one. Try it again. There's a little bit higher as well. So another change added. Changed which blocks some well generation features can replace with moss blocks and lush ground. It says lush ground can replace dirt, podzil, rooted dirt, stone, cave vines, clay, moss block, sand, and gravel. Moss block, bone mealing behavior tweaks. Bone mealing, a moss block can now also replace grass and mycelium. The maximum radius covered by moss bone mealing has been reduced by one. The chance of growing vegetation when bo bone mealing a moss block has been decreased. Pointed dripstone. If a stalactite is hanging from a dripstone block with a water source above it, it will slowly grow both the stalactite from above and the stalagmite from below. Growth speed is random but very slow. A single growth step can take several Minecraft days. A stalactite will only trigger growing if it is max 7 in length and the stalagmite or floor is max 10 or at blocks below. If the stalactite tip is inside water, it won't drip and therefore won't trigger any growth. If the stalagmite tip is underwater, it won't receive drops and therefore won't be grown by a dripping stalactite. Same thing if there are any fluids between the two tips. So this really confused me and I wrote one of them wrong. So feel free to revert to the change log if you want to understand that a little bit more. A stalagmite or stalactite will never grow when submerged in fluid. A bone meal. Bone meal now has its own new sound. Listen to this. Pretty cool. Was introduced to Java recently. So I'm glad to see that Bedrock isn't going to miss this feature. Player added distant damage sounds for burning, freezing, and drowning. Walking sound will now play at positions below Y equals zero. Features no longer behind the experimental toggles. So these are just naturally in your game now. And Minecraft is classing them as complete. So they do not need to be hidden behind the toggle. Powdered Snow. Powdered Snow is now available in the creative inventory in the game outside of the experimental features. Now there's a lot of information in regard to this. It just explains to you how Powdered Snow works. You pretty much know it. Players can't walk across it. Um, foxes can walk across it. Most mobs can't walk across it but will fall in it and freeze. It just explains everything you need to know about that. It also explains here that Glow Lichen is also available outside of the experiments and how it works and what they fix. So feel free to check the change log if you want to know more about that. Features and bug fixes. Fixed invite icon remaining on the start screen after signing out of Microsoft account. Accessibility features. Fixed a bug where text to speech read the wrong text um, when displaying toasts. Okay. It says commands. Fixed issues where forward slash structure delete command is listed in the middle of both forward slash structure load command. There's a bunch of command fixes and freezes and gameplay fixes. 
but I want you guys to go and read them on the change log in case you guys are a little bit unsure. Just in case you guys don't understand, this is the official change log. It is down below. There's a lot of fixes, tweaks, very simple tweaks and changes, and also technical changes. I'm not going over all of them, but if you did make it this far in today's video, I do appreciate all your support. Again, check the change log if you're a little bit unsure. So ladies and gentlemen, it took me Again, two hours to set up today's video. If you're still watching, you are the real MVP. And I have a comment that I want you to leave down below if you are still watching. And that is, hey Echo, Amethyst Geodes are pretty cool. If you find any cool seeds in the latest beta, let me know. And I might do a video on it. Apart from that, guys, have a great day. 1.16 is complete. We are now focusing on 1.17. And pretty much everything you're seeing in today's video, apart from the generation, uh, will be in the next update releasing in summer. Catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.